Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we will discuss the Zeta converter design. We will see how we can calculate the required component values for the specific converter and also how to generate these plots in MATLAB Simulink for this specific circuit. Of course, we will work out everything in the calculations step by step and also verify this in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Okay, this is our circuit. You see here the configuration for the Zeta converter. We assume that our switch is ideal. We have two inductors, L1 and L2, two capacitors, C1 and C2. There is a load here, which is the pure resistive load, R. There's a diode here, and also we measure the output current and output voltage. So that is the interest here. The design objective is shown here. So they design a Zeta converter circuit with having an input voltage Vs of 25 volts, output voltage of 100 volts, and output current, which is the load current, is 5 amps. In addition, we need to have a maximum peak-peak output ripple. In this case, delta VO over VO must be 1%. That means 1% of that 100, so that's just 1 uh, volts. And a maximum peak-peak capacitor ripple of the capacitor C1 must be 2%. Now the configuration for the Zeta converter is similar to the Chuck converter and also the SAPIC we have discussed in the previous example. The videos of that uh, two converters can be also found in the description of this video when you click on the playlist for the power electronics. Okay, let's look at our solutions. Uh, first we start of course with the calculations and um, for our design since this is really similar to the Chuck converter and the SAPIC we first determine the duty cycle using this formula. In this case, we have our output and also our input voltage. So that results here in this case, 0.8 or 80% duty cycle. We also need to select our switching frequency for our switch here. In this case, I take a switching frequency of 100 kilohertz. So this is just an arbitrary value. The load resistor in this case is R. It is not given, but we know that our specification for our 100 volts output voltage and the 5 amps output current. So just using the ohms low here simply results in 20 ohms. So if you make this resistor less than 20 ohms, you require more current, so your voltage will also drop. So this is the minimum allowed load resistor. If you go up, you can still create your output voltage and the required output current in this case, but this is the minimum uh, output uh, or load resistor we need here. Okay, the inductors, the values for the inductor L1 and L2 are now the next one. So the average inductor currents can be calculated using the situation when you look at the average situation or the steady state situation for your circuit. Now the steady state current for the L2, which is this one, is exact same as the output current. Why? Because the steady state current for the capacitor is zero. And that means the IL2 is equal to the I load, that means 5 amps. In a similar case, we can say that for the IL1, which is the inductor current, L1, is equal to the average of the switching uh, part, which is for the source, because the capacitor current is again zero. So you assume actually that the capacitor, or we consider that the capacitor current in steady state is zero. And uh, if you apply here that there's no the Kirchhoff's current law, we know that the IL1 at steady state will be IS. Now, we also know that the power supplied by our source is equal to the IS times VS. So we can also write it like PS over VS. And we have an expression for the current also in this fashion. Now we need a power balance. In this ideal case, we have an input. The source power must be the load power or the output power. Okay, that means the output power is then the product of the output current and the output voltage. And that is from 5 times 100, so 500 watts. So it means since PS is PO, that means this is also 500 watts, divided by the 25 volts we already had, it will result in 20 amps for our average uh, uh, the current of the L1. That's shown here. Now we have now the two necessary values for our next step because the peak peak inductor currents are important parameters and this is now the next step. Now the next step is we select a percentage of each inductor current uh, average uh, to be a ripple. So in this case for the delta IL1, so I say here the peak peak inductor current for L1 will be 10% of its average value will be then 10% of that 20 will be then 0.1 times 20 will be 2 amps. 
This is just an arbitrary selection. In this case, I also select 10% for the average inductor for the L2, so inductor current. That means 10% of the 5 amps here, that will result in 0.5 amps. So you actually see that this is now, this one is four times larger than that one. Now we can use this formula. This is again, very similar formulas as in the chuck converter and the uh, SAPIC. You see at L1 calculated using the switching frequency due to cycle input voltage and the peak peak inductor current we just selected. Now that will result in 200, uh, I mean 100 micro Henry's when you substitute values. Now this is what we need at minimum for this specific peak peak inductor curves. If you want to decrease this, for example, to 1.5, you need to increase your value here. In a similar case for the L2, that is also done using just specifically, of course, the delta IL2. Now you will result in 400 micro Henry's. Okay. Now the capacitors, the average capacitor voltage of C1, this is here. That can be calculated using the Kirchhoff's voltage law for average voltage values. Now we can say minus VL1, which is the average voltage across L1, minus VC1, which is the average voltage across the capacitor C1, plus the VL2, which is the average voltage across the L2, and plus the VO for the average output voltage, or it doesn't matter, you can also take the capacitor C2 average voltage. Now that will add up to zero. But we know average voltages for the, for the inductors are zero. So we can just cross out this one and that one. So we'll result in the VC1 average is equal to the average output voltage. So this is a nice result. We then also know that this must be also 100 volts. So the average capacitor for the voltage C1 must be also the voltage what we need at the output. In this polarity, of course. Okay, the peak peak capacitor voltage of C1 can be then calculated using the specification we have here because it must be 2% of the average capacitor voltage of C1. That means 0 0.02 times 100 we just calculated so that means be 2. So we need to check that, that it is indeed 2 volts maximum peak peak. Okay, the next steps are the calculation for the capacitor value C1. Now that can be done using this formula. You see again the duty cycle, the output voltage and the value we just determined for our peak peak capacitor voltage of C1. We also see here the resistor, so it is also an important parameter for the C1 here. Now that will result in 20 microfarads. Now for C2, we use again a similar formula as we have seen before in the other converters. And now we see that we need the variation in the output voltage because that is also given. And that is also here because that is really related to that output voltage. And now if you also substitute the values here, including that switching frequency, etc., you get here 625 nanofarads. So that's considerably smaller than the C1. Okay, let's now also check, check the conduction mode because we assumed in these calculations all that this is in the continuous current mode, so CCM. But we need to check that. So there are some minimum values we require for L1 and L2. For L1, we require this one. That is the formula. When you substitute here the duty cycle, the resistor, etc., you get 5 micro Henry's, which is the minimum L1 you need. And we had 100 micro Henry's, so this is definitely larger. So that's fine. For the L2, in a similar form, a different formula, you get here 20 micro Henry's, and we had 400 micro Henry's, so this is also all above the minimum required values. So we can say that assumption of the continuous current mode is valid. Okay, now let's collect the values here. We just calculate and look at the circuit in the simulator. This is the simulink circuit. You see here the ideal switch, the input voltage, also the capacitors, the inductor and diode, and the resistor here. And you see also some measurements we will sh shortly discuss in the next slides. We see also here the value for this specific situation of the average capacitor value of C1, which is 105 almost but we have calculated 100. So there's a slightly error here. We will see that shortly what we need to do for that. Okay, now let's now look at the waveforms. So first the solid state values of the output voltage and the output current, so IO and the VO. Now these are all the plots for the inductor voltage L1, inductor current L1, capacitor voltage for C1, inductor current L2. Now here, there are, those are two important parts for the load current for the pink one and for the load voltage, which is the orange one. Now you see here, the load current is 
5.25 amps now 0.55 amps larger actually considering the average value you see here also 105 volts which is also 5 volts larger so we need to do something about that that is we will we will discuss shortly now let's also look at the detailed waveforms for this specific situation we see here the inductive voltage going up to maximum of 25 which is the vs down to minus 105 so there's actually the two extremes for the inductor voltage l1 for this case we see also the capacity the, the inductor current is going up and down up and down but it stays in the continuous current mode because it's always positive and you see here also the values for the maximum and the minimum now for this one the maximum minimum is given for the inductor uh, l1 and for the inductor l1 current is also shown here and you see here the peak peak of 2.1 but we have calculated that the maximum allowed was 2 amps so this is what we have selected but it is a little bit larger 0.1 amps so we need to maybe also do something about that let's also look at the capacitor the maximum capacitor voltage for the c1 is 106 approximately maximum and 104 minimum approximately so the peak peak here is 2.1 to be precise and we actually calculated that the maximum allowed was 2 volts so it's also a little bit larger so again we need to do something maybe about that depending of course on all other parameters also now this is the inductor current for l2 the maximum almost 5.5 and the minimum is almost 4.97 or maybe 5 here and we see here 525 milliamps and we had calculated that the maximum allowed value was peak peak current for the l2 500 milliamps so this is close but still a little bit larger than expected and this is the load current going up and down and this is for the load voltage going up and down in a similar fashion but you see here for the load voltage this maximum is almost 100 and the minimum is 99.4 so here's the peak peak definitely much much larger than this 10.5 volts or more almost but we need of course one volt so this is definitely not not what we wanted so this is wrong or in incorrect so we need to fine-tune our circuit so we will start also doing that now so where can we do the fine tuning now we can change all the parameters here in order to get what we want now i have seen that the tuning of the converter this converter by adding adjusting value of l1 will do the job much faster so i have adjusted that value from 100 micro henry's to 200 micro henry's just by looking what the other parameters do i come up to this conclusion now the new plots are produced you see here again the, all the plots here Let's zoom in right away to the load current and load voltage. You see here 5.05 approximately, very close to 5. Now much, much closer. You see also here 101 approximately, so 109 volts for our output voltage. So these are very close to what we needed. So you can also make this much, much closer than the actual needed specifications by increasing this or maybe adjusting other parameters. But it's already good enough for this case. Now we look at the detailed situation now again tuned version you see here again the plots for the uh, two situation i will dive right away to the load voltage this is the or orange one you see here the maximum is almost 101.7 and the other one is 107 so here is the peak peak one volt which is also what we wanted so you see here maximum allowed was one so you can of course decrease that to take some headroom but this is perfectly fine in this case you see also the waveform for the output current and also other waveforms here what you also see is the capacitor c1 voltage which is maximum 102.1 and here almost 100.1 so in this case the peak peak is indeed full volt so that's also as we required all right this was our example considering the zeta converter design we have seen that we need to tune our circuit by adjusting the l1 here to get the required output voltage and output current specification also the required ripple we wanted for our capacitor if you have any questions comments about this example please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video